Hello, you are listening to Disney Travel Tales, episode number 41. This is a space where you can escape the real world and immerse yourself in someone's recent Disney trip. I'm Jenny, and today is a little bit different. I'm talking with my son Aiden about SeaWorld. A lot of times when people are visiting Disney, they also visit SeaWorld. There are SeaWorld locations in the vicinity of both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Today we're talking about SeaWorld in Texas. I hope you enjoy it. Is going on a Disney vacation something that you're wanting to do this year or even next year? I know Disney vacations can be a bucket list vacation for families, and I want to help make your vacation magical. Check the show notes for a form to fill out where I ask basic questions so I can get the perfect quote for you. Most people don't even realize this, but Disney builds in a fee for travel agents if you're using one or not. If you just go to the Disney website and book your own trip, you are still paying that fee and not getting any of the benefits. So take advantage of those benefits and use my services. Let me do all of the hard work and planning so you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy your vacation. If you're enjoying the show, please leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I absolutely love doing this show, and the best way to support me right now is to leave a positive review. Okay, so let's get going. Imagine yourself watching the Orca show for the very first time, and let's go. So today I'm here with Aiden, and we are going to talk about SeaWorld. Hi, Aiden. Hi. So we recently went to SeaWorld, and we're in Texas, so we went to SeaWorld San Antonio. And I decided to go ahead and do this episode and talk about SeaWorld because there is a SeaWorld in Orlando, and it's fairly close to Disney World. And a lot of people who visit Disney World, they also stop and visit SeaWorld. When I went to go buy our tickets, I noticed that they were offering season passes for two parks. So SeaWorld also has a water park called Aquatica. So you could get both park season passes for almost the same price as a one-day ticket. So I went ahead and bought us the season passes so this summer we can go visit the water park. Because when we had gone, the water park wasn't open yet, I don't think. Or at least all the attractions at the water park weren't open. And it was still a little bit cool outside, so I just don't think it would have been very fun for us. Because, I mean, we're in Texas, so it kind of needs to be hot for us to swim, right? Agreed. So we went on a Friday, and it was a Friday that um, people were off from school. And so we left really early so we could be there when the park opened at 1030. I wanted to try to get as many rides done that we could before the big crowds came. So we ended up getting there a little bit before the park opened. We parked, um, and with our season passes, our parking was included, so we didn't have to pay for that. So we parked, walked up, we got through the gates. At this point, I didn't really think they were going to let us in to do anything, but they actually did open a portion of the park. So we went in. There weren't that many people there. What do you think? No, when we got there, there were not um, uh, that much people. And getting to be able to walk around the park and just see everything without there being tons of crowds and lines was really nice. Yeah, it was actually a really nice morning. The weather was a little bit cooler, and yeah, the park was pretty empty. There were some families, and they kind of went all over to the Sesame Street area of SeaWorld, and they were doing those rides. So we decided to go and do some of the bigger rides. There's a new coaster there that we had not got a chance to ride yet called the Wave Breaker. So we went back to go do that, but that section of the park, they did not open yet. So we turned around and we saw the Steel Eel roller coaster and Aiden and I decided to go on that while Amelia and Asher waited. What did you think of the Steel Eel? The Steel Eel was a very fun coaster. There were a ton of drops and just just going fast that a normal just chill roller coaster rider would not enjoy this. But for the hardcore fans, it's definitely something a must do at SeaWorld. So I forgot to mention when we were standing in line, there was a very short line. I think we waited maybe 10 minutes, but the ride broke. And so 
Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit nervous to get on the ride because I don't like to get on rides after they've literally just been stuck somewhere. Um, but luckily we had no problems with that. And yeah, it was a great ride. I highly recommend it for anyone that likes roller coasters. So after the steel eel, we kind of walked over to the portion of the park where the wave breaker coaster was to kind of just wait for it to open. There was a gift shop there. We went in and we went to the restroom and then, yeah, so right at 1030 when the park officially opens, they open that portion of the park and back we went and we got in line. And one thing that kind of annoyed me about SeaWorld as opposed to some of the other theme parks is they don't tell you that you can't take a ride onto the bag until you're already like halfway through the line. So we already went halfway through the line. We had a really good position because everyone wanted to ride this ride. And yeah, we had to, I had to get out of line to go get a locker to put my bag in because it says absolutely no bags are allowed on the ride. So that was kind of frustrating. We had to get back in line. And I think we might have waited like 20 minutes for this ride. What do you think? Uh, yeah, the wait uh, wasn't that bad since we got there uh, pretty early, like when the ride opened. But for anybody that doesn't get that there that early, the line gets really long. Like, we walked past this place again later on in the day, and the line was packed. So, uh, we'll get into how the ride is later, but um, if you're planning to do this ride, you need to do this, like, as the park opens. Yeah, I totally agree because later in the day, the park got very busy, which we'll talk more about. And when I checked the wait time for this ride, it was 135 minutes. And that's a really long time to ride this ride. So this ride is really cool because it has like a theme that goes along with the ride. So when you get on the ride, you're sitting on like a jet ski um, and there's two by each other. So me and Amelia sat next to each other and Asher and Aiden sat next to each other. And then you kind of reach forward and lean forward to hold on to the handlebars. And they start playing this like movie clip while you're still waiting for the ride to start. And it talks about like rescuing sea animals and helping sea animals. And so it's like you're going to go on your jet ski and you're going to go rescue some sea animals. So once the ride takes off, it kind of goes down and turns slowly and it takes you into this like tunnel. And in the tunnel, you see like it's kind of staged like sea animal, like boats and equipment to rescue sea animals. And then there's a countdown and the other side of the door is open and just shoots you out. From then on, you go on a Pretty fast roller coaster um, uh, with no loops or steep drops. It's just just a fast, um, uh, fun roller coaster. It's not like the Steel Eel, where um, only hardcore ro- roller coaster fans will like. And I think anyone will like this ride. It's just fun. Yeah, Amelia wrote it, and she's nine, and she's a little bit scared of roller coasters. This ride was actually kind of. It wasn't scary to me, but the fact that you're like sitting on a jet ski, there's nothing, you're not sitting in an enclosed space. You're kind of like in the open and it does some pretty sharp turns like that. You really like, that's kind of part of the thrill of the ride. I think, don't you? I agree, but the turns aren't too sharp to where it's, um, uh, kind of frightening. It's, it all just feels very smooth. Yeah. It was a really smooth ride. It was a lot of fun. So after we got off this roller coaster, the um, penguins section was right there. So we went in and we saw the penguins. And when you go in to see the penguins, you are standing on like a flat escalator. So it's like a moving sidewalk. And you kind of just stand and it takes you across the front of where the penguins are. And you can see them in their, you know, SeaWorld habitat and it's snowing on them and they're swimming and they were feeding them and they were super cute, especially the baby penguins. They were adorable. This used to be Aiden's favorite part of SeaWorld. Yes. And it still is one of my favorite parts of SeaWorld. I love seeing penguins. Hey parents, do your kids listen to podcasts? Do they like solving mysteries and flexing their imaginations? Mysteries at Riddleton Elementary is a new children's mystery podcast. 
Your kid can join Billy Bonanza and Susie Sockington on exciting and wacky adventures as they attempt to solve mysteries around their school. Mysteries at Riddleton Elementary is available now on all podcast platforms. So after the penguins, we decided to go ahead and try to ride another roller coaster. At this point, we were going to just try to ride as many coasters as we could before the show started. So we went over and Aiden and I rode the Great White Roller Coaster. And I think this was my favorite one of the day. Yes, this is the best roller coaster at the park for people that love roller coasters. Like, if you thought the Steel Eel was intense, this roller coaster is like times 10. This roller coaster is loops, steep drops, you're hanging instead of sitting in a seat. It has everything, and it is incredibly fun. Yes, this one was so much fun. I loved it. I haven't been on a roller coaster where your feet dangle in a really long time, and so I forgot how fun they were, but this ride was great. Like, if the crowd or if the park wouldn't have been so busy and crowded, I probably would have wanted to ride it again, but... Like I said before, I checked these wait times later in the day, and they were ridiculously long. So after this ride, we met up with Asher and Amelia. They were uh, waiting for us in this arcade, and we kind of had to rush over to see the Orca show because it was getting close to starting, and I wanted to make sure we got a decent seat, which when I say a decent seat, I mean like in the very back, so we could easily leave. So we got there about 10 minutes before it started. We The place was already pretty full, which was which I was kind of surprised because over by the rides and walking around the park, it didn't feel really busy. But once we got to this stadium and the park had been open already probably a couple of hours, well, no, about an hour. I think this was like around yeah, 1130. Um, it was packed. This place was packed. And so we got a great seat in the very back, in the very corner. And we got to watch that show. So, Aiden, what do you think about the show? The Orca show is a must-do if you're going to SeaWorld. The, it's what they advertise the most, and it surely lives up to the hype. Uh, it, the Orcas are adorable, they're, but they're also amazing. Um, and it's just an entertaining show in general. Yeah, this is a great show. I mean, this is kind of what SeaWorld's all about. They talk about... How they take care of the animals. They talk about conservation. It's it's a whole lot. And I know there's a lot of people who might disagree with the way SeaWorld does things. I don't really get involved in any of that. But seeing the trainers with the animals, like the trainers love these animals and they respect the animals. And so this show is a really cool show. Watching them swim and jump and just all the tricks that they do, it's it's pretty amazing. And this was, I think, Amelia's first time that she would remember it. We've been to SeaWorld many times, but she was younger. And so I think this was probably her first time that she actually remembered it. And she was she really enjoyed it. So after we got done watching that show, we were kind of hungry. And Asher loves to go eat at this certain place in SeaWorld that has pasta like a pasta and pizza buffet it's called rosita's cafe and it's kind of over by the um sesame street area so it's like the rosita character from sesame street so we went over there um the pizza was good it's just kind of your standard pizza buffet it has some (laughs) it has like a salad bar like a very small salad bar it has pasta with different sauces Lots of different kinds of pizza, dessert pizza, and so this was kind of a nice place to sit and eat. The only thing was, it was freezing cold in there, and it is fairly expensive. Um, I think it was like $75 for the four of us to have a pizza buffet, which is kind of crazy, especially since Amelia, I think, ate one and a half pieces of pizza. The price makes sense. If the pizza lived up to the price, which it sadly didn't. The pizza kind of tasted like cafeteria food. And coming from a kid that has pizza every Fridays at his cafeteria, um, it, they're very similar um, tastes between the two. Um, the dessert pizza uh, did live up to it, though. Um, they had a cookie pizza. 
uh, with like chocolate drizzle on it, and that was really good. Yeah, and the cheese sticks, like the bread sticks, y'all liked as well. So when you leave this restaurant, right when you walk out, they have alligators there laying out, and they're. Every, I swear, every time we go, we have this big debate if the alligators are real or not. Yeah, so they're just they just sit there and don't do anything, which makes sense because like the, it's kind of a small enclosure and they can't really do anything. But like they literally look like statues. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's hard to tell. So after we ate, we decide to go and do a couple of the smaller rides. So there is this little section and it had some um they're still thrilling rides, but they're a little bit less intense, like not a roller coaster. Um, so we went ahead and we went over there and tried a couple of those. So once we got over there, this is kind of when we started feeling the busyness of the park. So we decided to do this ride called the Sea Swinger, and it's this circular ride, and everyone sits on that facing the outside, and it like is like a pendulum swing. It takes you like sideways, but it spins at the same time. This ride was terrifying. I was not a fan of this ride. I kept thinking that Amelia was going to fall out or I was going to fall out. Some people might not like this ride, but I love this ride. The ride goes very high and spins decently fast. So it's not for the lighthearted. Not at all. And there were like little kids getting on this ride. So I thought, oh, this is going to be no big deal. Yeah, I don't know how they did it. This ride was really scary. I was not a fan. There was another ride over there called Riptide Rescue that we wanted to do. But the line was incredibly long. And it's just not really a ride that is, it's almost like a carnival ride. So I just, it was not, I could not justify standing in the line for this ride. So there is a wooden roller coaster right over in this area called the Texas Stingray that we decided to do. Um, I'm going to say we waited in line probably like 30, 35 minutes for this ride. This was probably the longest line that we waited in all day. So this ride was super fun. It's really long. It's rickety because it's wooden, but I loved it. The boys loved it. But when it was over, Amelia was very upset. She did not like it. Like, she did not know it was going to be so scary. I feel like the drop on this was steeper than the steel eel. I don't know if it necessarily was, but it sure did feel like it, didn't it? It did. This ride was very fun, though. So after this ride, we decided Amelia really wanted to ride. Um, it's a water ride there called Real Loco. Um... So we went over there. I told her I would ride it with her. It was still a little bit cooler outside, but she really wanted to ride it. So I went over there and the wait was over two hours long. The line was insane. And that when we were there that morning, it was literally a walk on. Like I wish we would have done it in the morning because there was absolutely no way we were going to be able to do it at this time in the day. So when you're, one of the things you have to remember while you're at SeaWorld is there's shows with the um, animals there. And so you really have to time your day. So at the beginning of the day, you have to look at the schedule and kind of plan out your day. Pick which times you want to go see which shows and then which rides you want to do on the in-between. So after we got done with that roller coaster, there was only one more show that we wanted to go see, and that was the Otter Show, because the park was insanely busy. Like, I can't even express how busy it was. It's busier than any Disney park I've ever been to. There were just people everywhere. It was even hard to walk in certain places because of how many people were there. So we were kind of, and it was already getting later in the day. This last show was at 3.30, and we're, we live about two hours away. And so I figured after that show, that'd be a great time for us to go ahead and start heading home. So to pass some time, we decided to play some of the arcade games they had there. Um, Aiden tried a couple of games. You didn't win any of them, did you? No, I didn't. But the game I did play was a game where you tried to throw a ball in a bucket that was held up pretty much horizontally with a little tilt, but the back of it, um, the ball would bounce off it. So it seems very simple, but it actually was kind of difficult, and you had to make two in a row, 
which I got one in most of the time, but I couldn't get that second one in. And then Aiden, Asher played a basketball game, and he won, which I think it's funny. The basketball goals are oval-shaped, not circular like regular basketball goals. But he still got the ball in and won Amelia a giant sloth that we got to carry around. So thankfully, we were leaving soon after that. Um, I think y'all played a couple of other games. I didn't. And then we started heading over to the Otter Show, and we got to the Otter Show pretty early. I'm going to say like 20 minutes before it was supposed to start, and the kids wanted to go get a, like a treat. And so I'm like, oh, I'll just go grab us a seat, and y'all can go get a treat and meet me back over here. When I walked around the corner and saw that stadium, it was completely packed. Already 20 minutes before the show started. I could not believe it. I had to really look hard to find us a seat. Thankfully, I found us a seat that we kind of all squeezed into. But yeah, this place was insanely packed. And also, when me and Asher went to go get treats, we wanted to get Dippin' Dots. And we went and found the cart, and it was completely sold out at this time. So y'all didn't even get a treat, did y'all? No. Yeah, like the they were selling out of food. The place was packed. So we watched the Otter Show. We loved the Otter Show. It was like Sea Lion High School, and they were trying to graduate from high school. And it's super cute. I love it. Um, sea lions are cute, and the little otter that runs around. And after that show, we just decided to leave. We um, started walking out of the park. We kind of glanced over at Aquatica to see what it looked like. Um, because we had a season pass, or I think anyone is allowed to walk through it to kind of see it, but we were tired at this point. It was probably close to four o'clock. So we just decided to leave. I told the kids they could get a treat on the way home at Bucky's, our favorite gas station. But overall, we had a fantastic day. I would say this was probably the one of the best days we've ever had at SeaWorld. What do you think? I agree. This is gonna. This is one of the most memorable SeaWorld trips I've ever had. Yeah, it was really fun, and I can't wait to go back this summer. And my plan for this summer is to do SeaWorld early, do all the rides, maybe see a show, because there is a dolphin show and beluga whale show that we didn't get a chance to see just because timing-wise. Um, we just couldn't fit it into the schedule. And because we had a season pass, I didn't feel like stressed out. Like we have to see and do everything. So the next time we go, I do want to see that show and get to the park early, do the roller coaster rides, and then head over to the water park in the afternoon so that we can cool down and relax. Aiden, do you have any tips for people going to SeaWorld? Just try and knock out all the rides super early. Uh, the lines get super long for almost all of them. So being able to just get them all um, done and over with early on will both help you enjoy them more and save you some time. It's to- This is a park that is totally worth being there when it opens. And since they do open a little bit before official opening, I would just take advantage of that and do it. This is a park I would go to early and leave early as opposed to go too late and stay late because I think that's what a lot of people who go here, actually, that's their plan. So being there early, getting to get in there, do the rides and not have to wait in long lines is worth it. You could even possibly get all the rides done so then you could just schedule the rest of your day to walk around and see the shows and some of the animals around the park. Well, thank you, Aiden, for coming on the show. We will have to come back on and talk about when we head over and visit Aquatica. What do you think? I completely agree. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope this episode was fun and helpful to you if you're planning on visiting SeaWorld. If you're traveling to Disney this summer and want to come on the show to share your travel tale, let me know. Sharing your trip on the show really is such a great keepsake. You will love listening back to it. I promise. I have a form to fill out and once I get yours, I will get back to you within 48 hours. So make sure you check your junk mail because sometimes my emails, that's where they land. 
See the show notes for more information. Next week's show is going to be so much fun. I have a special guest coming on. She's been on before and she lives in Orlando. She is going to give us some great tips on how to see and meet certain characters at the different parks at Walt Disney World. To make sure you don't miss that episode or any other new episodes, make sure you subscribe to the show. You can also find Disney Travel Tales on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. I have pictures from all of my guests, all my past guests on their vacation, so you can go check all those out. And it's a great way for us to connect. So go find us and stop by and say hi. Until next time, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams become a reality.